Thursday, look at Thursday. Ain't even Thursday, I'm rocking her mix. Holla and shit, man. Regular Brooklyn shit. But I also figured out something else, man. I did a lot of research and um, I had a jumping gauge before I even did a swap on the engine on that car. So it's not even the car, it's full. It was pretty much my fault when I took out the engine. I should have, uh, I should have did a full rebuild. And um, I think, uh, I think my bearings, rod bearings, have to get changed. And that's a big fucking job. So, looks like I'm keeping that car. I can't sell that for now. I'm going to drive it like that for a little bit and then do an engine rebuild probably in a month. I don't know. But, can't make it worse. The engine's already, you know. I don't know, y'all, but I smell smoke. That's like the scariest thing in the fucking world when you're driving your vehicle and you smell. Man. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully. So... I want to show you, um, you know, this is my Impala, and I had this, uh, this issue for about a year, I believe, and I just kind of figured it out, because I didn't know at first what it was, and um, basically, if your gauge starts to jump, which you're going to see in a second, because I'm about to go, All right. you're going to see the gauge jump. Sorry, stupid New York. Somebody look up. Look at the street. Idiot. So look. Alright, that wasn't really a good demonstration so I, I could explain it a little bit more I guess so if your gauge um, starts to like tick and jump from different RPMs not RPMs, different uh, miles per hour right it's because you have bad oil pressure and now the motherfucker don't want to do it of course he doesn't want to do it now City cops, guys. He's trying to cross everybody. I drove better than him. He put on his lights for no reason. Look. He just don't want to wait in traffic. See, this is bullshit. But I'm gonna show you. This. I got it. You can put that middle gauge to tick. It normally always does, but I don't have a straightaway because I'm in Brooklyn, fucking Atlanta guy, but it's regular truck. Some bad drivers today, man. This is horrible. I can't show you now. I guess, I guess, give me a second. <laughs> Just because of the fact that this car is driving great. It hasn't even jumped. 
the meter hasn't jumped not once so it's kind of annoying um taking a pretty good uh trip through brooklyn you know it's been 40 minutes or 30 minutes i've been in the car um and i'm mad that because it's fun no jump I guess when we get on the highway going back home, I'll, I'll, I'll double check some more. Yeah, a little crazy, so I thought I'd test the car, see if it jumped. See, you see that, that jump. See it? All right, perfect. It did it. Might be it did it. At the end. So, man, it's gone. Man, somebody's cut me off, bro. I'll be tight. I was just gonna let it rip again and shit. But like, for the most part, the car is great. It just does that, that jumping thing with the gauge. And that is the oil pressure within the, the bearing rods. So, I'm, I'm, not, I'm pushing this shit right now. But, you guys already saw the jump, especially at the end. But it does it during the drive sometimes also. I want to show you how the Barclays Center, you know, real Brooklyn shit out here. But like, I'm pushing it though. The car is revving up, it's doing exactly what it got to do. Here right here, it's what happens with the little air gap and the oil. But the gauges. Normally shake a little way more than this. Um, for that reason, I guess today it's feeling good. I mean, I guess it's so always see the jump. All right, so you see that jump? That jump sometimes happens during the drive. So during my acceleration, I get the jump. And, um, and, um, it won't, it'll, it'll do a hesitation and it'll just, it'll pull and everything will be fine and then I'll do it again every now and again and I'm, you know, it makes so much sense that it is the, the, the oil pressure. Yeah, um, that's what I've been going through for a year or so, but I never worried about it because last year I had o o overheating issues, so I fixed the head gasket, I did all the overheating problems and then I, I, I had, um, it was a check engine light was perfect, right? And then all of a sudden, it was, uh, sorry, distracted by stupid people. So anyways, um, I fixed that problem and it has been driving good ever since. And then I ended up getting the oil pressure light. I did get it and um, I changed the oil pressure sensor. And then I ended up getting the ECU problem at the same time. So I thought that it was automatically gonna be um, the ECU that was causing the first sensor to go off. And I ended up buying a whole shell, a whole new shell, because the ECU is the is basically the wiring of the car. And um, now, after I bought the shell and I put it in the car, I was getting um, the same code, which was the, um, the oil pressure. So I ended up changing the oil pressure, um, both sensors again, and then. I was getting a biometrics code and a short code. So I didn't know if they was all related. So then I went for the biometrics. Now that I get, I got rid of the biometrics because it was a short in the wire, the only code left is the oil pressure, which is still, that's still the problem. But then looking at some videos and seeing what actually happens within the, the chambers, right? The heads of, and the pistons, the piston rods, I believe that that has to be the problem, you know? So, I will be changing the, the rod bearing seals on this 07 Impala. And after that, I'm pretty sure the check engine light is going off. And um, that ABS, that ABS is, I believe it's just the whole module I have to change. So, if I buy a used one at $60. But the car drives great. That's the crazy thing is just that, that one little issue with it, you know? Sends the code.
I forgot about the music. I can smell it burning right now. It's blinking like, and then when it's done burning or whatever, it was burning, it stopped blinking. I took my spot over there, so park back over here. Ooh, I can smell it though, y'all. That's definitely it, man. I know, it's definitely it. What a, what a way to find out. That's cool. You gotta give me a week though. Yeah, so I'm parked or whatever. Um, yeah, I can smell it. Like I said, I can smell it. Uh, it's just fun. I got to test it. I mean, I, I didn't know what it was the whole time. And now that I know, it's like, I know there's the only way to fix it would be like to really open up the engine. It's a, it's a, it's a repo engine, basically. Um, it's like, it's funny. It's just funny. You know? Um, well, you live and you learn, you know? But like, I like it because this is my first time ever having this issue with any car. And now that I see it, um, I feel it. I know exactly what it's doing. As I go into other cars, I just diagnose it the right way. So, and if it happens in other cars, I could I could prefer to swap a whole engine. This engine is, is fucking great. Like we, I already rebuilt that the whole top end of it last time a year ago. So now they go to the bottom and basically do it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be immaculate. Um, so that's the reason why I'm not thinking about getting a junkyard engine because then I feel like I might have head gasket problems and that with that I have to shave off everything it's just a lot of work I mean worst case scenario I might have to do that we'll see I'm gonna see how much the prices cost but I know for this these seals are only 20 bucks so 20 bucks on seals and just get the job done and then I have to redo all the oil or get a brand new engine well not a brand new engine but a used engine from the junkyard and take the risk we'll see I don't know I'll let y'all know but yeah appreciate it see you next time